104.7 The Cave, Mike the Intern, Jay Stevens back in the studio. Once again, it is Dark Side of the Stream, episode 79. And this week was my pick, Worst Roommate Ever yeah. on Netflix. Jeez, Mike. Oh, dude, it was Went good. dark on us again. Oh, real good. Good, 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 Here good. Here I come good. in with the party he with, with James Cocaine and Glitter. And glitter. And Everything's good and then now. got to flip it. To, now back uh, to sad reality. Crazy uh, roommates and crazy grandmas. You can watch yeah, this right? on Netflix. It's a, a series. I think it was like four or five episodes. Some pretty crazy stuff. Um, but before we get into uh, some of the, uh, I'm we're really just today going to talk about the first episode because it, in itself, yeah, is that's really pretty much it was my worth, favorite as far as uh, a full episode of this. But before we get into that story, like some of the guys you can picture doing shady stuff. Yeah, the in the second episode, the Asian dude like living with the Marine, like I, yeah, I, the that's a really bad the, example the, the, the of third one, the, of the, the police. It sucks. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. The marathon dude. Um, the thing that sucks about that situation was like she had called the police and said this guy is crazy but yeah. they can't do anything until something happens yeah. and that's probably one of Catch the hardest 22. things like if they don't have what are you supposed to do um bad bad situation for her and what ended up happening but we're not going to talk about it. we're just going to focus on the first episode but before we do that uh did you ever have roommates only a couple times in my life because i was always shacked up with uh girls <laughs> So you were the roommate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was the worst roommate ever. She, oh, she, would, no. she would be living with some of her girlfriends, and then all of a sudden, some guys like, "Hey, I'm Jay. I'm hey, gonna be here for let a while. me ruin your life." <laughs> God, no. Well, I didn't mean to set it up like that. I was hoping. I, you I mean, I had dirt. I had some some funny roommates times. I guess I have some funny experiences I could share. Sure. Yeah, yeah give me one. Yeah. Give me one. I was living with uh, one of the bouncers from the club that I was was uh, helping run, and he was a playboy as well. And so we would uh, we had this apartment, and we had a, a bird in there, a little cockatiel or something. We called it our ghetto chicken. And uh, one time, we had a, some girls over, and other girls came banging at the front and back door trying to get in. Uh, and we're like, Shh, they'll leave in a little bit. They'll leave in a little bit. It's cool. It's cool. That should have been red flag for all the girls involved. But. Anyway, I think that's probably my only good story that I can remember. Jay, the worst roommate ever. Um, I was living with people as soon as I could get out of the house up until the moment that I could get my own house and I was like, never again. Um, you know, I uh, I don't want to say that I had, I, I, I don't, because towards the end, uh, most of the roommates I had were like my best friends and we were just like in the mid to last part of college. So we'd kind of grown up. We definitely destroyed every house, every house we were at. Oh, I man. mean, lost a deposit on every house. I remember there was one house we lived on on Sunset that I was already had a lot of really good recording gear and guitars. But, you know, because we were living so nefarious and we just had like a, the door was always wide open. Yeah, yeah, just party time. I, yeah, I had my own lock and key on my door because I had so much Ooh, yeah, expensive gear. Now that I didn't stuff. trust my roommates, I just but didn't trust come over who was going to be in our house. I locked that door one time when I was drunk and I couldn't get into it. So I tried to kick it down and I ended up putting my foot right through the door in the next kick. I kicked the entire door and door frame off the wall. That was just one of the reasons why we lost the deposit on that house. We're discussing wow. worst roommates ever or worst tenants ever. Dark Side of the Stream continues next on 104.7. One hundred four point seven, the cave. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio. It is Dark Side of the Stream, episode seventy nine, discussing worst roommate ever on Netflix. So, uh, first episode tells the story of a woman named Dorothea Puente, and this in itself could have been. And we are going to dedicate that story to this entire podcast because it's in. It could be a movie. Freaking this one little story. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. It's insane that this woman existed at this time and did what she did for right so downtown long downtown sacramento literally four blocks away from the state capitol in yeah. california yeah. the detective involved in this makes that comment towards the end he goes it blows my mind that i'm standing four blocks away where there were people buried in the backyard and went unnoticed forever yeah so what she was earning like a was it like a, a house like almost like a happy house type thing or what was so it like? so let's reel it back yeah uh, you know, nature, nature, nature versus nurture here. Uh, Dorothea Puente really was just thrown out into this world and she did not have a chance. Both her parents were alcoholics. 
Her father repeatedly threatened to commit suicide in front of his kids. He died at TV in 37. Her mom immediately lost children, custody of the children right after that. Died in a motorcycle accident by the end of that year. Her and her brothers and sisters were sent to live in an orphanage where she was sexually abused. Her first marriage happened at 16. And she basically was just kind of thrown around. She ended up becoming a prostitute, then later on became a madam. She operated a brothel, went to prison, then got out and would go around pretending like she was a doctor to elderly people, would drug them while they were drugged, would steal from them. Then she would end up, then she ended up getting busted for doing that. Went to prison. And where she basically went to, I guess, con college is what they would call she learned, it. And, yeah, she learned how to tighten up her, her stick. Hustle. Because as a uh, as a felon and and having done what she did, part of her probation or parole was that she could never be involved in like any kind of medical field. She couldn't be a nurse. She couldn't be a doctor. She couldn't run any kind of like medical place and or halfway house, which is what she ended up doing. It seemed like it was kind of like a halfway house. Type thing. Yeah. And what, what, what she ended up, what she ended up doing was she would take these people off the street, be elderly, schizophrenic, whatever. And she would take them in. And then in exchange of getting their social security checks, she would put them up. She'd cook them meals, take care of them, blah, 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 blah. Well, it all kind of started with she made friends with this lady who had a lot of money. They ended up going in on a restaurant together, kept taking money, kept taking money, kept taking money, kept taking money. Eventually, when that well dried up, she killed her. Yeah, as, as you do when you're uh, a psychopath, a nefarious person. Well, and the crazy thing is, I, I, you look at a person like this and she just didn't have any. I, I guess Looks like a little old lady, man, that the, we'll get to that in a minute. That thing blew my mind, but she kills this woman, gets away with it, takes money, buys a house, and then starts having this rotating door of people. And it wasn't until a very good, and I feel so bad for that social worker. Had it not been for that social worker, this lady could have continued doing yeah. this for years because no one rose a red flag. How do you, I mean, most of these people were homeless, didn't have family, didn't have connection. You can't be reported missing if no one cares about you. Right, well, luckily exactly. one of them did. They did have someone that cared about them. We'll talk about that story next dark side of the stream on 104.7, the cave. One hundred four point seven, the cave. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio discussing worst roommate ever on Netflix. The first episode is a story of Dorothea Puente, aka Dorothea Helen Gray, aka Death House Landlady, aka Sharon Johansson, aka <laughs> I just can't go down. Yeah, my yeah, hey, just, this is because she had so many. Um, you got it, man. When you're running scams dude, and hustles, you got to have uh, multiple outs. Yeah, she uh, she basically has had what six no nine murders with six unconfirmed so inevitably she was convicted of three of the nine murders which ended up being found well with the exception of the lady she was a partner with um buried in her backyard so you would think you'd, dude, you wouldn't put them in your backyard though man right like uh, but i mean you're killing what, somebody what, how, that's the crazy thing is how you can do i i i would know from personal experience but what from what i've heard in all these stories dead bodies weigh a lot like you, you think chop you can up. You, you chop them out piece by piece, like how Johnny Cash got that Cadillac. Come, <laughs> or Garth Brooks. Where are the buried the bodies buried, Garth? Um, so she inevitably, I think, did exactly what you said. In a sense, she would chop them up to a point because they found in her house what they think is where she would prep the bodies, just carpets Man. on top of carpets, and then just like all this oh. Fluid underneath, and it's just horrific. But what ended up happening was a social worker who was working with this man who was a schizophrenic, didn't really have any ties to his family. He went by Bert, um, was actually living in a detox area in California. And she started talking to this guy, and she was like, Why are you in detox? And he said he would prefer to be in detox as opposed to a foster home or a mental health care healthcare facility because he felt like they treated him better in detox yeah. than they did. That says something about the mental health right. industry, at least at this point in history. 
Um, so she hears about this woman named Dorothea who has a house and they go over there. They take a look. She's got a box of kittens with her. She's feeding her, sells the whole story. She's grim care of these people. She asked Bert, you think this is cool? He's like, great done. She would check in on him. And all of a sudden one day he's not there. Dorothea says he went to Mexico with his family. Yeah. Like, what? Well, come to find out. After one of the tenants kind of ratted her out, said something's going on here. They filed the missing persons. They did a little bit of a looking and checking. And uh, when the detectives were there, they didn't really find out uh, what was actually going on until one of the tenants slipped the detective a note that says, yes, she's making yes, this she wants me to her. lie. So they bring that guy in and he tells a story that this, she, all the lies. Now he didn't see anything per se, but he, tells a story about how she had basically sold him this story and they go back, they dig and they find, find the body. one body, but they can't charge her with murder. Cause they don't know how that body, that body could have been there before. Right. You don't know. So she's allowed to go. She's allowed to stay there. They come back. They start digging again. They find another body. When they find that body, she goes, can I go get some coffee? They let her go. Hey, you just nipped out. I just was like, I don't know how you. Yeah, that's some how shoddy you police work there, said, right? I would have said, no, 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 no. Oh, but she was so good at selling her story that she was some quiet old lady that how could you argue that? Well, now you wouldn't. But uh, at the time, dude, you know, they tr- they judged the book by its cover. She just took off on the land and went out. Too. Yeah. She was on the run for a while until they mm-hmm. in, 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 inevitably someone who had been watching the news caught her and knew where she was. She'd been drinking at a bar. That's so crazy. Uh, and then they trailed her back to the hotel. They busted her. They ended up charging her with nine murders, including the woman she was a partner with and convicted her of three. Some would say that's kind of a miscarriage of justice, but she inevit- ended up going. To I'm prison sure for the there's rest more than that even really, you who know, knows, dude, because it's not like she was out there talking about it. Right. Um, the crazy thing about this is when you look at the pictures of her, when she was busted, she looks like she was, you know, 60 plus 70 years old. She was 50. Yeah. She did her makeup in the She'd style of grandma. Look older, she right? made, she did all wore the clothes. Grandmas look harmless because that's how she, that was her stick. Grandmas look harmless. God, what incredible. What you don't hear about women serial killers very often. Dorothea Puente definitely takes the cake as top three, in my opinion. We'll give it our uh, body bag review next. Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7 The K. One hundred four point seven, the K. Mike, the intern, Jay Stevens, back in the studio one more time. Dark side of the stream. We want to be your roommate. We, <laughs> we're talking worst roommate ever. More specifically, the first. It's episode. on Netflix. Watch it. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the second one as well. And um, second one's crazy. One, story. It's, 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 it's good. They, they definitely knocked it out of the park with them. Good segment. Yeah, they they and, definitely hooked uh, you right out the gate. And if I guess it, Jay, what we've come to find out that Jay was the worst roommate. Oh, I guess. I guess if you don't have a worst roommate, hey, you were the worst roommate. Yeah, I'm going to date your uh, roommate. Turns out I'm going to live here for a while. Yeah, oh, gosh. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Those just, were the days. Did you just bring like a night bag with you? Now I'm my own. That's a hoe bag. It's called a hoe bag. <laughs> Is that your hoe bag? I still have a hoe bag. I carry around with me. It's, it's even got more stuff in it now. I have a more complicated lifestyle. He's a hoe bag. It's a hoe bag. I, <laughs> I travel everywhere with my hoe bag because you never know where you're going to end up. Man. Oh, I love that. That's so good. Uh, well, uh, it, when you start seeing hoe bags online, hoe this bag. dude gets 20%. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a hoe better, bag. Or we're coming after have you room with for our everything attorneys. in there. Oh, uh, man. Hoe bag. It's my we bag. want to be your roommate, guys. Now I'm every my... time I see you come in with your bag, that's stuff. my home bag. That's my home bag. <laughs> yes, it's got every protein that's powder. It's got the clothes. It's got it's got change of clothes. It's got the workout <laughs> outfit. You never know, man. You never know if you're, you're not going to make it home one night. A little bit you know? of shaker glitter. You never yeah, know. Yeah, I got everything portable. Oh God, you know, dude, that, that's everything so good. is in the there. Hoe bag. All right. Yeah. Well, I love it. Um, so, how many uh, hoe bags would you give this documentary? <laughs> uh i'll give it just one of 3.5 yeah it was, it was good uh it's, it, you know it's another creepy story it was very creepy didn't reinvent the wheel very but very creepy i did it's good it, to hear these stories. The same. it's good to hear these stories i, I was uh, i was kind of like binge binging a bunch of datelines i hadn't watched and uh uh and specifically watched the one about a teacher who adopted these two children one was 12 and one was in their highly teens when the 12 year old had some behavioral problems got caught running away told the cops that mom was beating him she went to jail for five months come to find out the kid made it all up oh man. he gets 
put back into the system, ends up in prison by the age of 15. His older brother, who also adopted, ended up killing her and putting an ax in her head. All That's she wanted to do was ad ever. adopt these kids, give them a better life. Yeah, Ends man. Killed. Crazy. crazy. Anyway, time, that's not so. what we're talking about. We're talking about worst roommate ever. I give it three and a half. Yep. And uh, the for another reason why I'll never have a roommate ever other than my cat and dog. Yeah, yeah. I don't um, know. I, I don't think I'd go back. Right now, I'm my own worst roommate. He is his own roommate. Uh, so it's Jay's pick next for our 80th episode of Dark Side of the Stream. What's it going to be? I've got a really good one, a really interesting pick. It's one of the uh, only documentaries that we I've watched that has a 1047 The Cave logo in it. Yeah, yeah, look at Mike's face. Yes. This documentary is, um, it's on a weird, it's, if you don't want to pay for it, it's on Tubi, I think it is. Okay, it's Tubi. free, yeah, it's yeah, free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Center of Nowhere is what it's called. The Center of Nowhere. And it is about, the musical history of Springfield, Missouri. Hey, all right, good. Okay, cool. Center of Nowhere. So you're you going to see a lot of familiar faces in it. You're going to uh, see a lot of familiar places in it. And, and they got the cave logo in and, there. And it's got cave logo several times in this documentary. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Well, it's, why uh, did they interview us about it? Boom. I guess there they don't want to have to pay Boom. us. Jay, Jay, Jay dropping the mic, right. man. Well, hey, dropping the mic. Hey, uh, Center of Nowhere creators, if you want to get us on there, come on. It's not too late for a sequel. Uh, again, you can stream these online, 1047thecave.com, on our 104.7 The Cave app. This is Jay Stevens. I'm Mike, the intern, saying we, we watch, watch movies, documentaries so, so you, you don't, don't have, have to. to. It's Dark Side of the Stream on 104.7 The Cave.